Yo, what is going on, guys? Welcome back to another video. So it's Tier List Tuesday, and considering the last five tier lists have been tier listing every single team's number one center, winger, defenseman, starting goalie, and then last week, general manager, we obviously have one category left that we need to do, and that is head coaches. We are going to be tier listing every single head coach. Yes, there are some interim guys. I'm not going to be absolutely tearing them to shreds or praising them insane considering the small sample size, but we're going to be tier listing these head coaches based on what they've done this year definitely matters probably the most but a track record obviously does matter how how their team's core is when they were good when they actually had talent around did they succeed so without further ado let's dive into it we got great very good good solid man i'm not really going to dump on any of these coaches because any coach that really deserved to get fired at this point probably is fired so i don't have like bad i just landed on man up first ryan hushka of the calgary flames i'm gonna go solid not a ton of expectations, obviously. Once it became abundantly clear that they were going to sell at this year's deadline, you kind of expected them to just be hovering around 500. There's definitely been some bright spots for the Calgary Flames. Huberto is playing better of late. Uh, Sharon Govich has emerged as a future piece. Connor Zari looks like a promising young rookie, and I think Hushka's system has kind of led to that. They do. They look more fun, especially than last year in a Daryl Sutter system. So when looking at it, a solid coach. We won't really know for another like two to three years what we really have in him. So I'm going to go solid. Craig Cronin. Similarly, I, I like what I'm seeing from him in terms of Leo Carlson looks very good. Mason McTavish has taken another step. Minchikov in his rookie year has been very good. But at the end of the day, they still are a below 40% points percentage team. There's not a ton of expectations. We don't know what how he's going to do when they're in the playoff hunt. So right now, solid, solid start for a first year, but we really can't be expecting too much out of him. Don Granado, I'm going to go in meh, considering the Sabres had a bunch of expectations this season. They were one of the highest scoring teams in the entire NHL. That has not really been the case, and especially guys like Dylan Cousins, Owen Power, kind of taking a step back in their development, it looked like. Don Granado has been very disappointing. It wouldn't be surprising if he got fired this summer, and especially if they start out slow next year. I think they definitely fire him, so right now he's a meh. You got Hiller, the LA Kings coach, I'm going to go solid. He's only been the job for like a month, so you really can't. The LA Kings have been better versus Todd McClellan the, uh, by a decent margin. So when looking at it, he's, he's probably been good, but it's been a month. I'm not going to. There is such a thing as a new coach bump. You look at it historically, they do play better as soon as they get a new voice in the room. So right now I'm going to go solid. I think he's probably going to be back considering even if they lose in the playoffs, if they safely make the playoffs, he'll probably get a one or two year deal. So that'll be interesting. Mike Sullivan, I'm going to still go good, even though the Penguins have been kind of a train wreck this year. Their, their core just has kind of aged. We've seen what he's able to do with actual top, top tier teams. Obviously, won two Stanley Cups. A Stanley Cup winning coach is still going to be good in my mind. I, I think I think it is more so just just Cal Dubas, honestly, considering some of the bottom six ads. Uh, Brian Graves' contract, which is bad in general. But I still think Mike Sullivan is a pretty solid coach, solid to good coach. Definitely not maybe great or very good anymore. Dave Haxtall. I'm going to go meh, Seattle Kraken. Last year was kind of a, a sham for the most part. They, they're still like a solid team, but they shot so much above their expected goals total. They led the entire NHL and goals scored above expected. Their shooting percentage was absolutely juiced. I don't really think that he deserved a Jack Adams finalist last year. I still had him outside of my top 10, top 12 coaches. And that has become abundantly clear this year. Seattle, again, fighting for a playoff spot. Maybe they can somehow sneak in if they go on an absolute heater, but just look far less creative and effective offensively this year year and as a result they're probably gonna miss the playoffs by like five points Cassidy I'm gonna go great I, I know I know obviously won the Stanley Cup last year people might say recency bias but he was a very good coach in Boston yes they didn't win a Stanley Cup they made a Stanley Cup won a bunch of rounds consistently every single year was one of the best teams in the entire NHL I think Cassidy is a top three coach in the entire NHL right now. Yes, his first year in Vegas, they didn't make the playoffs. That's because Eichel, Pacioretty, and Stone all played like 35 games each. They had apocalyptic injuries. So I think going forward, Cassidy has earned the top three spot, in my opinion. John Hines, I'm going to still go solid. I've seen too much of this guy in New Jersey and Nashville that I'm not going to get massively fooled by a really good 35, 40 games in, in Minnesota. I do think Minnesota is horrible start. Everson kind of got screwed by bad goaltending, similarly to the guy that we're going to do in three spots. So in looking at it, Definitely next year will be very, very telling. He's very aggressive right now. We saw that one uh, OT empty net pull the goddamn goalie. So maybe he can prove me wrong. If they end up making the playoffs, I'll definitely bump him up his spot. But ne yeah, next year is going to be far more telling. They're kind of playing with house money, just being aggressive and have been playing better under him. But again, I watched so many games of the Devils and the and Devils mainly and the Predators. I still don't think that he's that good of a coach. Sheldon Keith, I'm going to go good. 
I, I, again, I, I think the stats are kind of undeniable. Even though he inherited a very good core, he is like the highest points percentage coach in the entire NHL. I don't think that he's a fantastic, fantastic coach, but I do blame the Leafs' playoff struggles more on the players than a Sheldon Keefe, for sure. It's Matthews, Marner, Nylander. It's not the goddamn guy behind the bench that is going to absolutely choke in a playoff series. So I still think that he's a good coach, safely gets a team into the playoffs every single year without question, 105 plus points for the most part. I still think he's a good coach and has a decent track record. Bednar, it's definitely in between great and very good. I'm going to go very good. That Stanley Cup win, very impressive, but they were so much dominant than every other team that they played in terms of the Western Conference, especially they just ran through because they didn't really face that much of a competition for the most part, besides maybe that Oilers team. He's a very good coach, though. Very good coach. Last year was probably, I, I argue that last year his coaching job might have been more impressive than the Stanley Cup run when he had 109 points without Gabriel Landeskog and they didn't even like fill that LTR money because they thought he might return. I still think Bednar is a very good coach, probably a top five coach, but I'm only putting a couple names in great. You're going to see who they are later. Chris Knobloch, good. Similarly to uh, Hines, the Oilers, Jay Woodcroft kind of got screwed again by horrible goaltending. The Wild and the Oilers had the worst goaltending in the entire NHL for like the first 15 games. Knobloch, obviously they have been dominant since then. He has like a 70% points percentage right now, and he was very good previously with the New York Rangers AHL team. I think he's a good coach, but definitely the playoffs and especially next year, a full season, full training camp, then he can move himself up. But right now I'm going to just put him in good. Derek Lalonde, also good. Obviously, Red Wings have taken a massive step this year. I think he is a part of that, obviously, behind the bench. Uh, guys like Lucas Raymond have taken a massive step in his development. So I think he is a good coach at this point, has proved himself with this big jump. LaViolette, very good. The, the track record's pretty crazy. He's made, he's won a Stanley Cup. Yeah, he won the 2006 Stanley Cup with the Hurricanes. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it sounds right. And then I think he's made a Stanley Cup or two on top of that. He's been coaching since the goddamn 1995. Like, Track record's insane. And this year when looking at it, the New York Rangers looked like they kind of stalled out as a team under Gerard Gallant. Laviolette comes in first in the division. It looked like the it looks like the Devils and the Hurricanes have passed them last year, but they have been dominant uh, just overall in terms of especially more so the defensive side. And forming that goddamn line of Panarin, uh, Lafreniere, and Trocek has been fantastic. LaViolette, very good coach. Jacques Martin, solid. Guy's 71. Guy kind of just came in. He's only going to be, he's definitely going to be an inter interim. I can't see the Senators offering a guy that's going to be 72 at the start of the next season. A two to three year contract. Senators haven't been that much better under him than versus DJ Smith. I'm not going to kill him, but at this point, he, he, the season was lost. They just brought him in because he's a familiar face with the franchise. Jim Montgomery, very good. Obviously, uh, was in Dallas prior to Boston. Had some uh, off-the-ice stuff, I believe. Ended up having to get removed. But he's been great in Boston. He was good in Dallas as well. He's been great in Boston. Last year, President Trophy, they choked in the playoffs. But yet again, they're far exceeding expectations. I think Jim Montgomery's overall system is a part of that. So I think he is a very good coach. Needs to prove it in the playoffs this year, especially... But I think the results are undeniable, especially with him in Boston. Very good. Paul Maurice, again, similarly to Bednar, if I expanded the great, he'd maybe be in there. But I'm going to go very good right now. I think it is more Bill Zito's building an absolute super team. But he was fantastic last year in the playoffs. Again, outcoached the shit out of like a Sheldon Keefe guy that's right below him. So when looking at Paul Maurice, he's similar to Lavalette, has a crazy track record, never won a Stanley Cup. But he made the Stanley Cup final with Carolina in 2002, 2003. So I'm looking at Maurice has the track record. It got a little bit stale between him and the Winnipeg Jets at the end. But since he's got into Florida and is one and a half, well, basically two seasons at this point, they have been a very good team, even though they clawed their way into the playoffs last year, but obviously made the Stanley Cup final. John Cooper, I'm going to still go great. I mean, obviously two Stanley Cups, Stanley Cup, three, sta two, two other Stanley Cup finals. He's just been the cream of the crop for the last basically decade. And even this year, I, I wouldn't say it's an amazing coaching job, but Vasilevsky's giving them sub 900 goaltending. They lost Sergachev and they're still probably right now. I'd say they're, they're like 75, 80% likely to make the playoffs. So he's had a lot of tough breaks this season. And in terms of Breeze Bois kind of shat the bed, like a Tanner to no trade, wasn't really able to do a much of the deadline because of that. John Cooper has kind of maximized, even though, again, he has a shit ton of star players, he's kind of been able to overcome that and make the playoffs this year. I know that's a low bar, but I think he's actually been a solid coach this year, especially. David Quinn, 
I know he doesn't have much to work with in San Jose, but as similarly to I watched John Hines not be good in New Jersey, I watched this guy in New York when he had some pressure on him and he was absolute shit. So again, San Jose, I think he's more of a, just a transitional coach. I think probably next at the end of the next season, they're going to fire him or something. So I still think that he's a mad coach, even though, again, he hasn't been that bad in San Jose because they don't have a ton of expectations overall. Luke Richardson, I'm going to go solid. Unlike Quinn, I think he has more potential than a Quinn. My hair's all over the place. But uh, yeah, no expectations right now. Chicago got off of this year, but that's because they've had a bunch of things not go their way. Obviously, Taylor Hall gets hurt. Uh, Corey Perry does what he apparently does. And then, yeah, they've just been very disappointing, but I wouldn't really say it's Luke Richardson. Similarly to a Cronin, we're going to have to wait and see two, three years when they actually have expectations of what kind of coach he actually is. Patty Wah, he's been very good. of He's been good of late, but I'm still going to go in solid again. He's only coached like 25 games at this point, say, I, I don't think it's fair to say, oh, he's a good coach. He's he's fantastic. But obviously his stint in Colorado, amazing first season, then kind of teetered off. And right now he's been pretty solid in New York, especially of late. Had a bit of a rough start, but then obviously won six straight games. So the jury's still out, but I'm liking what I'm seeing from Patty Wah. Pascal Vincent, if you follow me on Twitter and Instagram, you probably know I don't really like this guy that much. Some questionable decisions at times. He had Adam Fantilli on the fourth line, basically wouldn't play. Kent Johnson had to save, had to send him down. He's kind of done this weird thing. They suck, and despite that, he's been playing veterans like nonstop and not really giving the young guys uh, opportunities. I'm not really a fan of Pascal Vincent, and I think there's a decent chance under a new general manager he's only going to last one year, so I'm not a fan. Rod Brindamore, one of the great coaches. Yes, he doesn't have a Stanley Cup, but I think in terms of maximizing the talent on his team, I don't think that there's much better than Rod Brindamore. Every single year, they're a safe 100, 110, 105, 110 point team for the most part. When looking at that, every single year, his teams just absolutely dominate possession, dominate Corsi, dominate expected goals. I'm a big fan of Rod Brindamore. I think he probably is the best coach in the entire NHL. And the fact with Dell actually did something at the deadline this year in terms of getting an actual goal scorer last year. They didn't have uh, Pacioretty. They didn't have Svechnikov. He still made the Eastern Conference Finals. But this year will be really telling. And I think he finally has a squad, the finishing, to actually win the Stanley Cup. John Tortorella, very good. This year, in my opinion, should no doubt be the Jack Adams runner-up. Maybe even win it if the Flyers safely make the playoffs. And a guy that I'm going to get to in a little bit. Uh, if they fall off a little bit, I may vote for John Tortorella. Right now, he would be second, in my opinion. He gets there in Philly. Obviously, he has a crazy track record. Won a Stanley Cup back in 2003. Been with a bunch of different teams. Performed very well at the start of his Columbus tenure. Kind of went off the rails towards the end, but they just kind of sucked overall as a team. Uh, a hard coach. Loves his players. Far exceeding expectations. I didn't really like the hiring of him to Philly. Not because I thought he was like a horrible coach. I just thought, oh, He's going to like almost outperform. He's not going to want this rebuild crap. And that's kind of what happened in the sense of like, Denny Breer is like, we're kind of rebuilding, man. And like Tortorella is like, fuck that. No, like we're, we're winning now. It's like, it's going to be interesting to see how Philly is long-term when they probably, sh they probably should technically be rebuilding, but obviously Tortorella has smashed the expectations. And as a result is a very good coach. Drew Bannister. Been 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 pretty solid for the St. Louis Blues, but I, I I can't I can't really say good at this point, considering it's not that big of a sample size. Perfectly fine. Uh Blues are probably gonna miss the playoffs, but he's been okay for them. Andrew Burnett. I'm gonna put him in very good. I'm definitely gonna put him in very good. You look at him two seasons ago, Florida Panthers wins the president's trophy, wins the first playoff series since like 1996 for them, goes to the New Jersey Devils as the assistant coach basically runs the offense for the most part. I believe the power play, they become one of the most explosive teams, go from 60 points to 112 points, goes to, pre goes to Nashville, who did miss the playoffs last year, but they made a ton of changes in the offseason. No, they missed the playoffs by, yeah, they missed the playoffs by like four, five, three or four points. Uh, they make some changes, get rid of Duchesne, get rid of Johansson. Uh, and yeah, now they're in a playoff spot and they're playing some of the best hockey, especially of late. He's kind of transformed them. And the underlying numbers suggest that they are. They're like, 10th and expected goals percentage, five on five in like overall all situations. He's far outperforming what this roster, what we thought this roster could do. And I think they're gonna make the playoffs as a result. Peter DeBoer, an okay coach, not a good coach. I'm, I'm gonna put him in good. I'm a little bit, maybe a little bit lower on him than, than others. Wouldn't be in my top 10, but definitely between 11 through 13 for the most part. Has a decent track record everywhere he's went. He's won to a degree. Has he got that big Stanley Cup win yet? No, but still good coach. Rick Bonus, 
I'm going to pick Rick Bonus in very good. Last year, obviously, he makes the playoffs with the Winnipeg Jets. This year, they're even better. They're probably going to win the Central Division against very good Dallas Stars and Colorado Avalanche teams. He's done a very good job in Winnipeg. Tockett also gets a very good. Again, Tort- Tortorello would be my second place right now. Rick Tockett would be my first after getting the job midseason last year after not looking, the Canucks weren't looking very good. They look like a completely different team this year. Going to maybe win the President's Trophy, and Tockett is a massive reason why. Travis Green... This is unfair because he's coached like two games, but still Travis Green, his end of the end, end of his Vancouver tenure was absolutely disastrous. And I don't think that he's that good of a coach. I'm going to put him in meh. Um, Spencer Carberry. I don't know why I blanked on his name. For some reason, I thought for a second that I mixed up Hushka, uh, Hushka and Carberry, but this is Spencer Carberry. I know that Spencer Carberry. Good. He's been very good. Obviously, they missed the playoffs. They only have 80 points last year uh, with LaViolette. So the expectations were not that high for Carberry. And they're low-key battling for a playoff spot. Like, I know they probably won't make it because they they sold it to deadline. Like, it's, it's probably not going to happen. But they far exceeded expectations. And I think Carberry is a decent reason why. And especially considering, like, their best players, Ovechkin's having a down year. But yet, they're still battling for a playoff spot. It's been very impressive. Martin St. Louis. I'm going to put him in solid. I know Habs fans are going to say he's like very good. There's been no expectations. He's done a pretty solid job developing talent. But right now, until we really see again, similarly to some of the other guys that I've listed, until we see with them with actual like a playoff caliber team and see if they can actually get it done, I can't say he's a good coach. Obviously, Slavkovsky's tra- tracking in the right direction. Uh, Caulfield's playing pretty solid. A lot of other young guys are doing pretty good. You can maybe bump him up to good, but right now I'm going to go solid. And then Andre Torney. Oh, it's dude. I mean, a uh, month ago definitely would be in solid for sure. A month and a half ago before that losing streak, but that losing streak was so disheartening. And that does have something to do with coaching in terms of how do you let your team lose 14 goddamn games when you're not a Chicago Blackhawks or San Jose Sharks? I'm not sure Andre Torney is a long-term answer in Arizona. They might have to eventually move off him, even though I think they just signed him to an extension. But yeah, here it is. Three coaches in great Bunch of coaches and very good. Couple solid coaches. I tried to not just go off the standings, even though it kind of reflects that for the most part. But uh, let me know in the comments. What do you think about this? And I'll be seeing the next one.